All this is Dr. Mubeen Sayyid from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. So let's start a discussion. It is interesting. I'm going to share my screen. So here is my screen. Here is my cartoon. Who loves Dr. Bean? So last Friday, the Friday before this Friday that was passed. So that means about 10 days ago. I had another set of symptoms. Some of you actually picked it up during the last Friday's talk. Some of you messaged me and said, your voice was trembling. Some said it was panicky and so on. You, I would actually suggest if you watch the Friday before this Friday, the video, it will be an interesting one. So um, Thursday I was exposed once more. I actually felt I was in a restaurant. That restaurant was a little crowded. And I felt that I'm going to become sick. I am easy to catch any kind of colds. So anyways, nothing happened till the next morning. And the next morning, what I had was some shortness of breath and palpitation and a feeling of lump in this area and that's it. So I considered that, that this is allergies. So I ignored it. So by the time the time came for the uh, talk, I had become enough breathless that it was actually interesting to deliver that lecture because I had to take, I had to really measure my breaths, which was very interesting. I never have had that. So let me first share the set of symptoms so that we can begin to differentiate it from maybe it was allergy or it was common cold or it was flu or it was just placebo. I did not do any test. I just didn't care. The reason was if the test was positive or not. Number one, I was not going out to uh, meaning expose anyone. So that was taken care of. And number two, test or not, I was going to manage it as if I had COVID. So I assumed it is COVID. But of course, the question becomes, was it COVID or not? So let me sh share some of the symptom sets. And in the um, medical field, we use a word pathognomonic. Pathognomonic means some symptom some indicator or a collection of indicator that becomes very specific for a specific disease. Very few cases are such that some symptoms directly say this is this disease. So let's see what did I have. <laughs> Texas says, I thought you looked kind of shiny Friday, but I was too busy sneezing with my BF. I'm so sorry about that. I hope you're feeling better. I hope Casey, Kelly, of Texas you and other um, feel better as well. So let's go over <laughs> some of the, how do you like this cartoon? So let's go over some of these symptoms. And I would tell you the progression of the symptoms. No fever, not even a feeling of fever. So from there, if you started doing a differential diagnosis, you could say, well, that could be allergies then. So no fever. Allergies can have fever if there is a super infection. So allergy causes somebody to go down a little, then they develop congestion, then they develop supras or secondary infections, a bacterial infection, and then they develop fever. So allergies usually themselves do not cause fever. Although autoimmune diseases can cause fever, allergies usually don't. So fever, no fever. Since then, so today is the 10th day till now. Brain fog. This was the most interesting experience of my life. I never had brain fog. I actually, if you have been with me for some time, you know that even today you can hear my voice sometimes trembles and that is when my breath finishes. 
and I have to stop. <laughs> so, uh, brain fog. You must have seen that I am very focused in some areas: engineering, medicine, presenting, drawing. This is it. Th these are my main parts of life. And because of that, I do not use my brain cycles on many other things, which may be a good thing or a bad thing. But within this area of medicine, my brain works very good. I am sharp in it. And I wanted to do a study in last 10 days. And can you imagine, I dropped presenting it because I could not understand efficacy. Efficacy that I have been discussing for two and a half years or two years, more than two years. Efficacy, the table which showed numbers for efficacy, I just could not decipher that. And I became very frustrated with this. That what the heck, I cannot understand this table. And the more I would stress and more I would try to understand it, the more I'll become frustrated because I won't. And there is a fun story. Um, I immediately asked my wife, I said, please bring in coconut oil and MCT oil and start using that. And within a day, I had such a dramatic response. But again, this is all a person's experience. It, this all may be just totally placebo. I have no idea. But brain fog was very real. For the first time in my life, I realized what brain fog can be. Fatigue. This was the biggest one this time. I became so fatigued that I kept saying that Veterans Affairs study that said every reinfection came back as severe. I said, if it was talking about fatigue, then yes, the first time around, I was not even fatigued. When I had the vaccine, I became fatigued. And if you see my vaccine day discussions, even on those days, I kept teaching. This fatigue, after two, three, four exposures, this was hard. I would not be able to stay upright like this. That is one. Number two, this is the first time ever in my life I felt walking up the stairs, I had to carry myself. I had never had this expression before in my life. So that was very interesting. With the, that came muscle and joint pains. Fatigue was more severe than before. Muscle and joint pains were more as well. And there are two reasons for that. One is the inflammation occurring at the neuromuscular junctions, which make, even when the nervous system wants the muscles to work, the impulse is not translating well to the muscle. And so there is a disconnect so all the muscle fibers are not working correctly. The muscle is inflamed, so it is aching. The joints pay the price because of two reasons. Number one, joints can get inflammation as well. Number two, the joints are now working with a muscle set that is not stable. So let's say if the set of muscle was already always, let's say one, two, three, four muscles and stabilizing this joint, all of a sudden this muscle is less powerful compared to normal, and this muscle is pulling more, the joint can start aching. The other very interesting thing that happened, we, these have never happened to me before, not with a flu or a common cold or any other thing. Th these are just new things. My heels, the tendons of the heels, the Achilles heel, that started hurt, hurting. And by the way, I was not taking any medicine, so it's not that statins or something was there. Uh, I don't have any comorbidities, touch wood. So I don't have any permanent medicines that I take. So muscle and joint pains and fatigue, this was much more different compared to before. Sleep disturbance was a huge deal for me. But this was similar as last times, that I just would find it so difficult to go to sleep. And of course, when I'll not go to sleep very well, then... I will not have a, I would feel sleepy during the day. And now I have brain fog, plus I'm not slept well. So the whole thing became a very weird experience. And the most bothersome, 
other than the fatigue and muscle and joint pains. The most bothersome was shortness of breath. That really made me anxious. I never have had previous infections, vaccine, any other previous colds. I never have had shortness of breath in my life. And this time I had shortness of breath. And what will happen is I'll wake up at night gasping for air. And I mean, I'm a medical doctor. We know there are medical conditions where this can happen. For example, heart failure. So I'm sitting right now in front of you. I'm okay. My heart is fine. My blood pressure is actually, even at this age, it is not on the upper side. It is actually within the normal range. So my blood pressure is okay. My heart, a couple of years ago, I had requested a complete workup. My heart is fine. And so there was no reason that heart was failing or blood uh, vascular systems were not correctly functioning or the um, oxygen hemoglobin was not correctly working. Those things were fine. I was still very short on breath. And with that will come palpitations. And that was very disabling. And I think palpitations came for two reasons. One was I'll become anxious that I'm short on breath. And secondly, I think I had autonomic dysfunction this time around. And this autonomic dysfunction, in my opinion, showed in two ways. One was palpitations, and the second was urinary frequency. Bladder also has sympathetic and parasympathetic control. Sympathetic system keeps bladder relaxed and the sphincters closed. And parasympathetic system causes the bladder muscles or detrusor muscles, we say, contract, and that causes voiding. And if a person does not void, then at least it causes that feeling of needing to go to the restroom. And it is interesting that many of the folks are saying, and maybe it is that way, are saying that this is a UTI caused by SARS-CoV-2, BFI, maybe because I didn't get my urine checked for that. However, the frequency was very interesting, very different from the normal UTI type uh, disease or illness. So shortness of breath, palpitation, and continuously going. I remember one of the discussions, I was doing this talk as I'm doing here. I, I would answer that, Patty. So I was doing this talk as I'm doing here. And I, I just started the talk. And before that, I went to the restroom. And then during the talk, I had to once again go to the restroom. The other very interesting thing was I went to TJX. TJX is near our home. I wanted to buy a table from my office. So it's about 10 minutes from my place. Went to TJX, entered the door and just looked at a few tables and I had to go back. I don't use restrooms in the stores, so I had to go back. Now there is a question, Patty said, too much coffee? No. So actually I became very much concerned. So I used to take coffee in the morning at six, and then I would take another coffee somewhere in the middle of the day. So I not only made it one glass in the morning, or cup, and I also just let it be half cup. And I became so conscious that this is probably coffee doing this, that I actually changed it to tea. <laughs> so if I would want coffee, I'll take tea. But most of the time, I, I would not want to have tea either. So it was not just coffee. So that was very interesting because that is, I take more coffee than I took in these days because I became conscious of what the heck is happening with my heart. Urinary frequency was increased. That So this, these three, shortness of breath, palpitations, and urinary frequency, micturation, repeated micturation, that was the most bothersome because I would not be able to go anywhere. I will not be able to you know, do anything. I'm sitting here working and I have to run to the restrooms again and again. So that was interesting. And palpitations would bother me when I'm trying to sleep and the heart is just going thumping 
palpitation the definition of palpitation is uh, when patient is aware of their heartbeat we call that palpitation whatever is the reason that could be sympathetic system that is more active and causing forceful contraction that could be electrolytes that could be um, neurotransmitters or that could be heart itself filling more and then pumping more so there can be many reasons for the heart to be irritated and do that and then that could be anxious anxiousness anxiety but i was not an anxious for anything so shortness of breath palpitations and urinary frequency that was the most interesting one so if i i had decided that i'll put some things here so let me just go over this quickly tinnitus if my tinnitus so i have tinnitus my whole life and i don't ever even think about it and my way of knowing if tinnitus has increased is when i start thinking about it that tinnitus is there so this time i had more or louder tinnitus compared to last times and so that would be interesting that i would actually hear it so tinnitus has increased had increased and it was more than previous episodes again i did not do the test because i didn't think there is going to be anything different that means this whole thing could be just a an unexplained thing these all things cannot be explained by allergy only or common cold only or um, flu only but anyways tinnitus was louder what was louder uh, fatigue was more muscle and joint pains were more shortness of breath i never had this kind of short i did have some shortness of breath previous times but that was like a slight nuisance this time i felt i'm short on breath my oxygen dropped to 95 96 which previously used to stay within 97 98 so that was very interesting tinnitus was louder i had no congestion i would talk with someone over the phone and they'll say i can hear some congestion in your voice but generally that cough cough and the runny nose and and painful sore throat nothing and you can actually see that because i've been teaching for the last 10 days as well so you can see that i was uh, the previous episode remember when i had it then i kept coughing <laughs> for i think another month so no cough no runny nose no sore throat no no pain nothing so this whole area no headache no pressure on the eyes no issue um, you can hear my voice even now has some congestion but this is what it was but nothing more there's no feeling of anything not even in bronchi last time when i had it i felt that there was an irritation in my bronchi but mostly i had cough and runny nose i didn't have it this time runny nose nothing cough nothing painful sore throat nothing that that was the interesting thing so what did i really get this was a totally different set of symptoms the symptoms were primarily let me now scale them for you fever zero brain fog for me that was on a scale of 1 to 10 i would say 8 for a couple of days as soon as i started coconut oil and uh, mct oil it just became so much better the trade off was i started having heartburn so i had to stop it because i would just keep getting heartburn but it was dramatic fatigue that was on a scale of 1 to 10 once again for me there are people who cannot even walk i my friend jean could not even walk so i cannot say that what i the way i would scale it would be the same so if we had three mild moderate severe i'll say moderate or lesser than moderate but i would think 6 or 7 sleep disturbance it was the same as before 6 or 7 i hated it because i was not able to sleep and then the next day i would look all sleepy as well and i won't be able to do my function properly muscle and joint pains that was bad for me 
shortness of breath for me that was 10 out of 10 but we know that that is not sufficient i mean we, i was still 95 96 the people who drop down to 80 or 70 or are on ventilators so i'm not again comparing to anyone else for me it was bothersome it was making me anxious so let's call it eight palpitations palpitations made me work during the days and during the nights because I would just not go to bed. I would have palpitations. And so um, I would not be by myself. <laughs> Christine says, treat yourself as if you would treat a patient for snake venom. Okay, so urinary frequency that increased. Tinnitus was increased from before. Congestion, no, runny nose, no, cough, no, painful, sore throat, nothing. Unity frequency. Now, what is the situation today? Of course, there was no fever, and so there is no fever now. All good. Brain fog, all good, I think. Fatigue, really, I think I'm done with that. Sleep disturbance, I had a good sleep last night. Muscle and joint pains, gone. Shortness of breath, I had slight shortness of breath that was still there today uh, palpitations last night when i slept i think i felt for a for a minute or two that i had palpitations but then i went to sleep other times previous days the palpitations would not let me go to sleep so i would consider this done i'll keep watching it urinary frequency recovered i was um, yesterday i went out with my wife for a dinner and I was fine, but I was very afraid going out because of the frequency before I thought I won't be able to go to dinner, but we went for dinner, we sat down, we had food, we enjoyed our time, then we came back, no issues. Tinnitus, gone. Congestion, never had it. Runny nose, never had it. Cough, never had it. Painful sore throat, never had it. So then I did two experiments on myself and I, before i go to the experiments here is something about the tinnitus someone wrote this comment on um on youtube i think the urinary frequency increase is being seen and i don't think and i can be wrong this is me thinking like a doctor not a research worker who has seen data and that is i don't think it is the uti per se meaning virus causing infection I think it is more of a parasympathetic and sympathetic control issue and or irritation. Although when it is irritating, when there is irritation, usually drinking a little bit of more water or alkalining the um, urine can help. I increased the water, but that actually didn't help. And I don't think that although there can be UTIs which do not have fever, but um, they usually do not go away as well without any medication, and mine is just recovered. So here, Dr. Bean, have you looked or can you look in an increase in UTIs? I got a UTI and did not respond. I think somebody put this comment yesterday or day before. I got a UTI, did not respond to antibiotics. So if I am correct that this is a sympathetic dysregulation or autonomic dysregulation, which would then be connected to uh, palpitations as well, then it would not respond to antibiotics. And I could be wrong. Did a second round and didn't feel better until the last day of the second round, 14 days later. And this 14 days later could be because um, it's recovered, just like I am on 10th day, don't have it. My client got a UTI, my son got a UTI, didn't respond to antibiotics, took a couple of weeks. His friend, she got a UTI. My friend at her church, two ladies had bad UTIs and one hospitalized. I just read an article about UTIs not responding to antibiotics because I don't think it is urinary tract infection. It is frequency of micturation. And frequency of micturation can be because of anxiety. It can be because of autonomic dysfunction. It can be neuro uh, bladder. It can be because of some electrolytes. It can be water drinking. It can be habits. Um, and then it can be irritation. 
it can because of less water it can be then uh, infections as well so it's not necessary that this all is uh, just uti now all of us were exposed to positive covid and didn't get covid i'm wondering if possible the uti's could actually be covid in the bladder instead of respiratory since covid can be found in stool samples should covid be checked in urine so <clears throat> sure meaning if i i would not be able to sit down here and claim that no covid cannot be in the bladder this little thing this virus has surprised us all in so many ways that i cannot claim that no it cannot be so if you can get it checked excellent so then going back here my biggest help during this time keeping up with the <laughs> with the advice that stay home um uh, how did i what did i do so i went this way had the problem i thought this is not i didn't actually think anything of it other than maybe some allergies then it became bad i took some things for two days and it went down then i stopped it went up again then i took another thing and it went down again and that is my regime regimen even now so let me explain what did i do so there is a sodoku discussion sky frog how are you so so let's see i will look at the comments in a second so what did i start once i felt that all right i have a problem i probably am looking at covid i started with uh, ibuprofen luffy and Uh, allegra and this is when i was totally not able to walk correctly i still remember going to the kitchen to go get my medicines was just i had to be careful walking downstairs <laughs> so anyways that's what happened um so ibuprofen allegra and one more thing and within a few hours i was good and that of course ibuprofen is anti inflammatory that would help allegra is anti histamine that would help uh, then there is the luffy has the nuclear factor k beta pathway as well that would help so there was help in there but brain fog did not feel uh, become better neither did the sleep become better and the shortness of breath stayed enough as well it became less that means palpitations became less as well that i felt better but i could not i still felt stressed because of the palpitations so i started taking inhaler that inhaler i had it was an antihistamine inhaler that was prescribed to me by the doctor with my first infection so now after fourth again yes i don't have a test so you want to call it infection or you want to call it flu or cold or allergy or nothing but i took that and as soon as i took this one and here why did i go down um so recovered why did i become bad again i stopped a specific drug and i intentionally stopped it i wanted to see what will that do and as soon as i stopped it i became bad again now instead of resuming it i wanted to see is there something else that can help because some people cannot get it so i took antihistamine inhaler and now antihistamine inhaler that means fixing the symptom of a of the problem plus ibuprofen plus allegra these three almost brought me similar to before so i kept going till the point that yesterday i stopped everything and i was fine today before the lecture uh, i felt some shortness of breath and i took 
the antihistamine as well. Nothing else. So this was very interesting. I then called um, my doctor that you have met here as well. And I said, how are you treating here in the US? How are you treating your outpatient patients? And he said, antihistamines for 14 days, ibuprofen, ibuprofen, and other for one week. So that unknowingly, we both had a very similar approach to it. So that was very interesting. So my learning here was ibuprofen, Allegra, and Luffy, or ibuprofen, Allegra, and symptomatic treatment of shortness of breath. They both worked. For the brain fog, coconut oil and MCT oil. Then it can give you some gastritis or a little heartburn as well. So I wrote it over here to tell you that I could not figure out how does efficacy work. That is so funny. Okay, and finally, my family and and an, a previously injured patient as well that you are have mentioned them sometimes. Family. My son. So you could always almost say that he was, as the Qatari studies say, I was, as the Veterans Affairs study said. So we had both US and Qatar in one place. So he had one day, he was doing the dishes. And I said, um, and he was standing with a wider stance. And I said, why are you standing like that? And he said, well, I'm just very tired. So I want to keep my balance. So I said, why are you tired? And I knew, and I told him a day ago that, hey, I'm exposed, so don't come near me. Or, But anyways, he said, um, because I did not sleep well. I said, but that is also a sign of COVID. So he said, no, no, don't, I don't think so. It is that. And he went back. And about an hour later, so he went back. I thought he has got gone to bed. An hour later, he was sitting and playing games and or, or chatting with his friends, whatever the youngsters do. He was doing that. And that's it. It's fine. So one night of disturbance and one morning of fatigue. My wife, nothing. The only thing she said, which was very interesting for me, uh, when we were at dinner, she said, um, so she makes those pots, pottery. She does pottery for, uh, for a hobby. And she said, something very strange happened this week. Some of my, when I was making the pots, they would not come out right. And I did, I used to make them so good before, but this week I could not make them. And so, so my son, somebody said, how old? He is 24. So he is in the Katri cohort age. I was in the US cohort age. Anyways, the end result is, don't know what it was. Um, but for me, if you said, hey, oh, one more uh, update. I think you, some of you know that uh, one of my nieces is or was vaccine injured and quite severely. So she, I spoke with her today and I said, how are you doing? And she said, 100% recovered. Her recovery was, uh, I have discussed in the past, she went through various uh, protocols and finally... LDN had helped her. So today I said, so how, what is the change in your lifestyle? She said, I can only do keto. I cannot eat carbs anymore. So she is uh, on keto type diet or non-carb type diet. One second, she said, I really have learned how to stay relaxed. If I do not relax, I can end up with a, with a relapse. So, but generally she's fine, she's working again, and she's a happy person. So that is good to know. Um, so here are the 
John, so let's let me answer some of the questions. So she had started with some doctors started her with statins and Moravirok like things, but she really responded well to LDN. But she had to make her uh, diet changes. It's not that she fully recovered, but she has gone from a point where she would say, I think I would never have a normal life. From there to, I think I can have a day or two of normalcy or towards normalcy, and then I'll have a relapse. To, hey, totally fine, no issues, and I know what not to do. I, I have learned to meditate. I do not stress myself out, and uh, I do not take carbs. And that I said, any medicines, any supplements, nothing. So that is good. Siddhartha says, thanks for everything. You're very welcome. All right. So let's see some questions here. Julia says, how is Sean doing? I think I have to ask him how he's doing. His latest uh, therapy was interesting. So I will ask him. I would request him if he can join us as well. Uh, Alicia says, I always love you. Yeah. Correct. So flowers, that is correct. She had to learn how to stay healthy. And in that process, she's a young woman, similar age as my son. She had to learn how to be uh, stress-free or with less stress. She had to learn what things trigger the stress. She had to learn what diets are better for her. So she had to learn all of that. But she learned it. So that is a good news. Nipa says, lot of our lot of people are falling sick. Touch wood, not US. Reason still on ivermectin weekly. Any close gathering extra dose seems to work. Slightest symptoms. Oh, I take two homeopathy medicines. Very interesting. Um, Susan says, why statin? So there has been some um, protocols that use statin as well. And statin can act as an anti-inflammatory. So Matthew says, would zinc be helpful? I am not sure that if zinc by itself is helpful. Sometimes there are some supplements or there are some substances that are less in our body. And so our uh, general functioning of our brain or tissues is not as correct. And then fixing the levels would help. <laughs> Michael... Bruno says, I love watching your videos. You, you've become a weekly staple. If I can't watch daily, I try my best to catch up by the end of the week. Thank you, Dr. Me. You are very welcome. Stay safe, happy, and healthy. Uh, Raghav says, I love your drawings. Thank you very much. Raghav says, you're a good artist. Thank you very much. Uh, I remember somebody had once... Uh, in their opinion, tried to insult me and said, this wannabe doctor. And I responded that I am actually a doctor. I know that part. I want to be an artist. So I like drawing. So John says, what was the protocol? Uh, Jane, sorry. What was the protocol you, your niece used after being vac vaccinated after then keto? So interestingly, after vaccinated, she was okay. Then she had an infection about six, seven months after, and then she developed it. No, actually, I'm saying it the other way around. She had the infection. She was okay. Then someone told her to go get the vaccination as well, and she got the vaccine. And then a month after, she developed the symptoms. So when she developed symptoms, it was really bad. Um, so anyways... She started off with the Luffy and vitamin D and supplement correction and all that. So I assume nowadays, when I don't talk about vitamins and others, that is because I'm assuming after two and a half years of discussions, we know to keep our vitamins correct. That doesn't mean that we always do. I have lapse on that. So how can I blame someone or accuse someone of not keeping it when I 
but still we know that we should that's one so first her vitamins needed to be corrected she did that and she felt better she felt enough better that she actually went for a tour to canada and when she came back she had a relapse when she had the relapse she would not respond to the same therapies as before and the therapies were flccc protocols and i have been part of uh, forming some of those protocols not all but some then uh, next she tried was moravirox and statin i do not know if she really took the moravirox but that was a protocol and she did not have good result from that and then finally ldn became a magic for her Raghav says that what, why is the bevacizumab so good compared to other monoclonals? It really just depends. So imagine this is a spike protein. My face is a spike protein, and you are making antibodies. You are a company who are making antibodies, and let's say that you had made an antibody that attaches here. So let's say this is Avio Shield, right? And now Lily comes in and they make an antibody that attaches here. Now imagine if the virus mutates this area, then this antibody is not working anymore. But let's say this area is not mutated that well, so this is still working. So that's what's happening. That Lily's bevacizumab became lucky that virus did not mutate that area, so it is still able to cover all the variants. A lot of people are complaining of drowsiness and sleeping wrong time. It is this. Yes, this is. Um, if you collect these all together, sleep disturbance nowadays with the muscle aches, joint pains, fatigue, a GIT disturbance as well. Interestingly, I didn't have GIT disturbance. Urinary frequency, cardiac problems, palpitations, shortness of breath. Um, cough sore throat runny nose can be then painful eyes irritated eyes headache tinnitus is actually reduced which is very interesting uh this combination can be from covid of course uh, there can be other diseases too <laughs> poor poor So Gold Contrera says, I currently have cellulitis for the third time in 30 years. What can I do to improve my resistance in future? Currently using IMAS Plus with weekly album. What else? Most important thing for me is to improve on the, so again, not a medical advice, um, to improve on the vitamins levels. That or I do not like the idea of boosting the immune system. There is boosted immune system is actually a bad thing that is what is causing the issues balanced immune system is important and there are i have done many discussions about how to balance it that is a first step number 1 number 2 please don't overdo it and dug gross every time says that hey tell us more about the uh, skipping days but generally whatever are you taking supplements just skip one day and then take them again it does not make your body become used to them or at least it keeps your body responding to them better so john i have seen studies for reactivation of viruses i have actually done a discussion of uh, epstein barr virus and how that uh, reactivation occurs and what is the mechanism of that so yes re reactivations can happen So Bob says exposure to sunlight sufficient for vitamin D. That is good as well, but sometimes it may not be sufficient depending upon the amount of sunlight, the amount of exposure to sunlight, the angle of sun, the substrate, so the the secondary raw material for it. So there are a bunch of things. So it may be useful to bring the 
vitamin D levels to a correct level, not an overdose, correct levels. The Iranian study had said that anything above 39 was very protective. I have seen people keeping it between 50 to 60. Above 100 starts becoming a little um, risky. So this is the level. John says spatula time. So John, I was actually going to do a different discussion today. And that was about the um, prozon or hook effect. And I was going to use spatulas and <laughs> ladles, but I did this. So, okay, says theoretically, how long for autophagy to resolve long COVID? So in theory, if autophagy has engaged, the problem is that we can skip a meal, but that doesn't mean autophagy started. If autophagy has engaged, then you would start feeling the betterment right away because the cells would ramp down, the antibodies productions will reduce and you'll feel better right away. Vids says, have you done a video on mask science? No, plus it has become a religion. There are folks who say it doesn't work and they have a bunch of studies and there are folks who say it works and they have a bunch of studies. So it just become bad science to discuss. So I, I stay away from, if you have seen my work, sometimes people become very uh, surprised and they ask me, are you a Democrat or a Republican? Are you a pro-vax or anti-vax? And I have a very simple answer. I am a doctor. So I try to find things both on the vaccine side that are useful and vaccine side that are hurtful. And that is how a medicine is. Similarly, infection side that is useful and in infection side that could be hurtful. And uh, similarly, masks are in that area now. And for masks, I stay away from it because there is just a lot already. Screaming fly production says, can. So how about, do you want to do some chit chat? Do you want to do chit chat on this channel? I can hang up and come back for the chit chat. Otherwise, this video would become long. And... Um, so please put your comment here if you would like to continue having this discussion. I'll come back live on the same channel, not on the other one. And in the meantime, please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, like, subscribe, and share. I was reading Skyfrog's comment. And if you would like to support this work, there are links in the description. You can become a patron. You can become a Substack member, a Locals member. You can use PayPal to support this work. You can become member of YouTube, etc. <laughs> so there and the most important one, you can purchase a plan for Dr. Bean where there are an additional 900 videos, which I think are good videos. Um, they have good content. So $97 and 900 videos is almost 10 cent per video. I think that's a good um, thing. So thank you very much. Uh, if you are up for chit chat, say up for chit chat and i will come back live on the same channel in a few minutes thank you bye for now and minimum if you can do is like subscribe and share bye bye